Lori Jordan, and he's going to share a little bit about what we're doing in imagery. Lori, please, please help me uh, in uh, welcoming Lori Jordan. Thank you very much, Jack. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, I'm very excited to be here, and it's great to be together with you and to see so many longtime good friends and business uh, colleagues that I've had the good fortune to work with over many, many years. I can truthfully say that over the last 30 plus years that I've been involved with imagery and GIS, this is hands down the most exciting time in my uh, entire professional career. At ESRI, we're very blessed on a daily basis to be involved in some just super interesting, dramatic, advanced, state-of-the-art technology and development. So at a professional level, it's very motivating and inspiring. At the same time, at the personal private level, I'm actually, to make a confession, a very low-tech guy deep inside. Um, I have an old house, I have an old car, and I still have to ask my young teenage daughters how to use this nice new iPhone that I have. <laughs> so um, I think the technical team in Redlands has gotten wind of this because recently they sent me a, a new laser pointer with a big warning label on it. And the label says, Laurie, do not peer into laser with remaining eye. <laughs> I have to think about how I'm going to come back with that one. So this morning, we'd like to share with you a key strategic direction of our company, which is the integration of imagery at the core level into our GIS system throughout the entire enterprise. Uh, many of us remember the early days of GIS going back to the late 60s, early 70s, in which imagery and GIS were two completely different animals totally different technologies, completely different industries. When you said imagery, that was raster, oh, that's pixels, that's an image processing package like an ERDOS or an I2S or a PCI or ER mapper. Versus GIS, well, no, that's vectors, that's topology, that's arc info. And that persisted for a couple of decades. But now we're integrating these together into one unified environment. We like to think of this as two sides of the same coin. So what does imagery bring to this natural marriage? Well, of course, particularly for dynamically changing situations such as hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and fires, imagery gives us the latest, most accurate, up-to-date picture of what's really going on. In a complementary sense, GIS provides a very rich conceptual framework to do the rigorous statistical and spatial analyses and visual information. So these two technologies inform each other. It's a natural fit. They gain power when they're merged together. The way this integration is deployed on an operational basis is throughout an entire enterprise architectural environment. And the central organizing principle that underpins this is the geodatabase. ArcGIS, as Jack said, is built on top of this with its modern services-oriented architecture, which enables the uh, flow of information through templates, workflows, and trade crafts, and then allows all of the stakeholders that are tied into this network to freely share information between and among each other, as well as to provide useful results to their natural constituents or consumers, increasingly through uh, tools such as web access. We were thinking about the hundreds of different uh, possible applications we could show you this morning. Uh, a natural one that uh, percolated to the top quickly is a wildfire application. It's a great example of a time-critical situation that needs rapid access of information, rapid and accurate analysis of that information, and quick delivery to a decision maker to help deal with the crisis. And throughout this, the subtext will illustrate uh, how dynamically our new uh, image data management tools uh, handle a situation like this, and also what GIS brings to imagery. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to my teammate, Dan Zimbel, and he's going to take us for a drive. Dan? As, as we've seen, GIS is an important tool for managing information. In this case, we're looking at an area where wildfire occurred near Ketchum, Idaho in the summer of 2007. If we were to take a closer look at how this fire spread over its two and a half week history and how it approached the city of Ketchum, Idaho, we get a better understanding of how important it is to keep GIS up to date. So for this scenario, we've assembled a number of GIS layers to help us manage this scenario. However, we're missing a key aspect, and that is imagery. Let's look at a new way for how we can discover and find imagery and access it 
for our use in GIS. What you're looking at is a prototype application jointly developed between ESRI and GUI. We can search a vast image archive of Iconos imagery over our area of interest. We can search by cloud cover, specify date ranges, and define areas of interest that we can filter this query. So I'm searching that image catalog based on that selected area, and I have a number of image services being streamed to my view from the servers in Thornton, Colorado. You can see how the image services are being rendered, but they may be rendered in a way that we want to see what's under all of the other images. There may be more imagery. For example, we want to dynamically resort this response by the server by least cloud cover, and you can see the image server will respond accordingly. Once we've identified the images we're interested in, we can select the image and add them to our order. I'm going to select a number of images here to make sure that I have the proper coverage over our area of interest in Ketchum, Idaho. Once we have those images selected, we can preview the order and only focus on those that we want. Now, up to this point, this application shows us a very nice, user-friendly way of searching and finding imagery, and it's based on our JS server, the image extension, and the Flex API. However, the actual innovative aspect is not really the search and discovery, but more on how we access this imagery once we've identified it. So typically, we would have two options. We would be able to request that this imagery be delivered via FTP site, where we could download the data to our local system or we could request to have the imagery delivered to us on media like a DVD or a hard drive. That could take a couple of days. What's extre extremely innovative about this application is by selecting an image service, we can ask ArcGIS server to dynamically assemble an image service based on this selected set that we just created. We can then stream that right into our GIS for immediate use and exploitation. So this is providing a much faster access to the imagery than what we're normally used to. Other benefits besides the image service being timely is the ability to actually have all of the data that's inherent in the image. So in this case, the imagery is an Iconos image service. That means we have four bands of multispectral information that we can work with. We can change it from a natural color to a color infrared, and we can also access all the underlying data values so we can do enhancements on the fly to get to the image that we want. Now, in this particular case, we're integrating both GIS and imagery at the services-oriented level. This means that we can have much faster discovery of the right imagery and be able to deliver that imagery for immediate and rapid assessment. And back to you, Lori. Great.